Hey guys, I just got a call this morning from a couple of friends of mine, John A. Light and Gene Borielli. And uh, they're doing a show and they have a guy coming on, a guy named Victor Paterno. Uh, he's supposed to be a very close friend to Carmine Lemondozzi. They asked me a few questions about Carmine. I knew him well. And it brought up an entire story about him. And I thought I would tell you about it. So back in the day when the Gambino family was run by Albert Anastasia, he was called a Mad Hatter. He killed a lot of people. He ran. Murder Incorporated. At one time, all of the families went to him, and he had a crew of about 200 stone cold killers. A lot of them were Jewish guys. If you go back in history, you'll see about him. And uh, they were killing people left and right. Then he became the boss of the Gambino family. His top crew and his top guy was this Carmine Lemondozzi. I understand that his crew was about 27 made members that were under him, without counting associates. So obviously, he must have been a workhorse for Albert Anastasia. Eventually, they killed Albert Anastasia. All the bosses, the commission got together and they got rid of him. They killed him in a barber shop in Manhattan. There's all stories about that, but I'm not going to get into all of these side stories. I'm going to stay with Carmine right now. I got to know him very well. He's a lot older than me. He was very, very wise, very smart, very sharp. My guy, Tato, told me they brought him down from a captain to a maid guy because he got in some serious trouble. The trouble was that when he was a captain, he had an affair with a maid guy, Sammy Mintz, they used to call him, who was under him, Sammy Mintz's wife. The story gets even crazier. In time, he knew the daughter and he had an affair with her as well at the same time. He came forward and told the boss of the family and presented his case. They thought about killing Carmine, but all the bosses, for whatever reason, sat down and made a decision that they would keep him alive. They would break him, bring him down as a captain, call him in, and tell him to live. This is what you'll have to do. You'll have to leave your actual wife, divorce her. You'll stay away from Sammy Mintz's wife forever. And you will marry the daughter. If you don't live up to any of these conditions that we set forth for you, we'll kill you. Carmine lived up to that. Got a divorce from his wife. Stayed away from the older lady and married the daughter. That happened way before I was in the mafia, I was told by my mentor, Tato Arello, this whole story about him. He was extremely wealthy. He's a good looking man, well dressed. Matter of fact, when I had the Plaza Suite, I bought that building and I had to get a mortgage and he owned an actual mortgage 
company with his own money. And I went to him and I got a $250,000 mortgage from him. He gave me a lot of advice, a lot of good advice. I remember him once saying, Sammy, jealous and envious people are the worst people on the planet. Stay away from them when you meet them. They'll always be jealous at your success. They'll always be envious of you. They will backstab. Stay away from them. It ended up to be good advice. Most of his family was in the life. His brother Paul Lemondozzi was a made guy. Paul's son, I think his name was Paul as well, Paul Jr. He was a made guy. His nephew, Danny Marino, was a made guy and then became a captain. He had another one who ran a union. He became a made guy. And he had a, a few other ones, his brother Sonny, was a shooter, but I don't believe in my time frame that he ever got made. That another one, I forget his name, another nephew, real tough guy, also a shooter, and never got made. So just his immediate family around him was very heavy. They put him with a captain named Jimmy Brown. Jimmy Brown was told to give him buckwheats. Buckwheats means to fuck with him and, and stay on him, push him a little bit here now and then. I don't think Jimmy, from what I saw after I was in, gave him too much buckwheat to tell you the truth. I think Jimmy was a little afraid of him. I had the Plaza Suite, which was a big disco. There's a whole story about that. I'm not gonna get into that either. But one night, he was in the Plaza Suite, standing in the corner, got a young girl, real pretty, kind of cornered her. She started crying, she couldn't get out. He pushed her back into the corner. He was a little drunk. A beef was put up to me because I owned the Plaza Suite. Other people owned it, but it was my joint as a made guy. I ran it. When he came to me about the beef, Jimmy Brown came, my guy Tato, They came to me because it was my place and I was a friend of ours, a made guy. They left it to me, my decision on what to do. I already knew him. I liked him. I knew his history, just like I explained to you. So I said, I'd like to talk to him. A sit down, me and him. You guys both could be present, his captain and my captain. They agreed. I sat down with him and I talked to Carmine and I said, Carmine, we go back a while. You gave me a lot of good advice. You were a good guy in every way. You got a little bit of a dick problem, bro. I know your history. That's my joint. I know that young girl you cornered against the bar. That's not Kozunosha. That's not us. It's my time to make a decision with you. and they'll abide by it. 
My decision is nothing happens to you. But I have to tell you in front of your man and my man, I don't like that kind of behavior. You gave me advice, so I'm going to give you advice. You do that in my place again, I will kill you on the fucking spot. If I get a call and I'm home, there'll be no sit downs. There'll be nothing. If these two people sitting with us, these two cabaragines, Agree to this. There's no need for another sit down. I really have a lot of respect for you. I went back to the story of him and Sammy Mintz. I left this part out purposely so I could say it now. Sammy Mintz was also called in when they made that big decision about what he had to do who he had to marry. When they brought Sammy Mintz in, they said, listen, your crime is that even though he was your cabaragine, you knew what he was doing, you had proof, you came to us. You're a coward. You should have shot him in the fucking head, killed him then came to us and said, tell us the truth. I killed him because of X, Y, Z. We would have forgiven you and made you the captain. That's the manly thing for you to do. But you didn't do the manly thing. It's your wife. It's your daughter that he was sleeping with. And you came to us to do your dirty work. That's why we didn't kill him. I told him, like I'm telling you, so I won't make the same mistake as Sammy Mintz. I won't go to no one. I will kill you. I don't want to keep repeating it, but I want this to penetrate because I do like you. I think the world of you. But I will never, ever accept this again. He agreed. It went to Jimmy Brown and it went to Tato. Both of them agreed. This is a beautiful decision. You didn't rape her. You didn't really molest her. You abused her. If you would have raped her, my decision would have been totally different. So this guy who's going to be on a show with uh, Johnny A. Light and uh, Jean Boreal, who are both friends of mine, every now and then they have their own show on YouTube. I'm asked a lot of questions about them. I know both of them. Both of them are tough guys. Both of them are friends of mine. So when I'm asked questions about them, either one or both of them, most of the times my answer is ask them. I don't talk about people behind their back. If you have a question or you don't believe something, ask them. I hope people don't talk about me, especially people of that status. So if you like this story, press like. Subscribe. A lot of people talk to me from Patreon. This story will come out on Patreon along with my podcasts that are coming out ad-free, commercial-free. We're doing a lot of other things. 
If you haven't already seen the podcast with the video, go check it out. Episode three is coming out Friday, or you could get it now on Patreon. So if you like all of it, I could tell you one last thing. Adios, motherfucker.